Hey everyone, welcome back to Orcs Paint Shop. This is Ryan here, the War Boss, coming at you with another vlog. This video is going to be all about helping use tools to paint your miniatures. Uh, one thing that I like to use, as you can tell in front of me, I have a bunch of them laid out, is bottle caps. Bottle caps are a good way to keep you from touching your base of your mini and the miniature itself when painting. Um, this is not the only way to do it, but this is the way that I prefer, so I'm going to teach you how to do it. And the reason I prefer this is because it's really good and really cheap to get a lot of them for when you go ahead and do lot painting. If you're gonna do lot painting, you're gonna pump out a ton of miniatures. You're gonna want something to hold all of those miniatures. A lot of people don't think of bottle caps. They think of cork or they think of wooden dowels, which you can see here, I have some cork that I'll show you how to glue onto that and be able to get it off easy without damaging the cork or the miniature. Um, and then I have a wooden dowel, the same thing. Um, what I tend to use, I use Elmer's glue, as you can see, it's just the standard glue, something that's easy to be easy to get away with water. Don't use the wood glue, because the wood glue is actually a different compound and makes it hard for you to get things off the wooden dowel or the cork. So I tend not to do those two. I just use the simple, cheap Elmer's glue out of the store and bottle caps. Um, as well as there's also the Citadel paint holder. Um, this is another good tool, but unfortunately for 11 bucks a pop, I can't buy 100 of them and hold them. You know, if Citadel wants to send me 100 of them, hey, Citadel will send me 100 of them. Great. And this is not a product placement. This is just me and my personal uh, opinion. One thing I like about these ones, and I'm going to show you, is if you take a model this size and you slide it, boom, it holds it very well. And I can, and as you can see, it doesn't move, doesn't have a problem. There's no worries. And then if you take a bigger model or a smaller model, like one of my little grots, oop, this base is kind of messed up, but there you go. So again, very good. So I will say Citadel makes good products for paint, but this is only good for one or two or maybe even five miniatures at a time. You know, what if I'm gonna do a lot of paint for somebody? And you know, I can't do that. I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, miniatures and a lot of, Holders. This is going to cost me like 12 bucks uh, a pop or 11 bucks a pop, unless you're in the UK. I think it's like nine euros or something like that. I'm not exactly sure about the rate exchange, but then again, I mean, that works if you're doing one or two minis. But I'm doing hundreds. I mean, I have a whole like 300 freaking uh, 300 model uh, Grot army I got to do. So I can't use a paint holder for that because I'm not going to pull the paint out, put the paint in, pull the paint out, put the paint in. So I do bottle caps. So I'm going to go ahead and do a bunch in front of you and just show you how I do it. This way here you get it. Now, um, as an example, you can get square bases on Minute Maid or Gatorade bottle caps, which I like to use. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Now, the trick is, is you can literally get glue on the the cap of the thing and just go ahead and do that. Boop. See, if you glob it, don't worry, just spread it out because you can easily get it off. And if you go to do magnetizing, nobody's gonna see the bottom of it. So boop, just like that. And as you can see, I did one a little earlier and now they hold. This one slides a little bit, but this one won't. Um, so there you go. Now you just leave them for 24 hours or even like two or three hours and that works very well. And you can get that done. And like, you know, it's still enough here. As you can see, this model's a little too big for that. So, you know, you could do that, but then it's gonna be hell hard to get it off. <coughs> but it works as well. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting cold. You can put the Sylvanuff model on that one. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's an example. Like I said, I grabbed different models and different uh, size bottle caps to show you this because it's a very good tool, especially if you've been collecting bottle caps as long as I have. Um, you know, I don't always drink this, but I have like family and friends who also help. And I mean, it's a great way to save money, make it easy. Whoop you know, and go from there, so boom. Now, what about miniatures that don't have bases? Like this guy. So, he is a 3D printed model that I really am excited to paint. Again, he'll fit right on this bottle cap. And the cool thing about it, if I do it that way, I can actually get inside his legs and his feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, as you can see on this guy, he doesn't have base, He's got that flat little piece right there. I'm gonna literally just stick his flat belly right onto that and let it sit. Because one thing about Elmer's glue, especially if you're not painting that area, it snaps off and gets out of it. So it's not a worry. And um, you know, that's gonna be added to it. Now, you're probably saying, okay, that's cool. You did square bases, you did small models, you did medium models. What about your big models? Well, there's two different types of big models. There's big, like a Trogoth model, and a Gore Grunter, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this one. Now, one thing you wanna pay attention to is this one has little dots in it. Those are for magnets. 
I don't know if a lot of people know that. Or they're for drilling, you know, through and using special like prods so you can make custom bases. A lot of people don't know that. I have been doing this a little while and I like to magnetize my models, so that's what I do. One thing that I do like to do with the drop off though, so I save those little small holes, is I'll go ahead and I'll go around the whole base with a nice decent coat because remember the trogoth is heavier than a smaller mini. So as you can see here, and I'm going around, oop, I get some on my finger and on the model base, which is fine. Like again, nobody's gonna see the bottom and if you need to, you can always chip it off. Okay, done. And then just boop. Now, if it gets on your fingers, no big deal. All you gotta do is rub it together a few times and look, it turns to that little nasty brown stuff on it. You can see right there on my finger. And ta-da! So now you're gonna let this guy dry thoroughly. This is a 24 hour dry. Just because, again, he's very big, he's very heavy, he's gonna slide a little bit, you don't wanna mess with him. Now, with that said, now I can prime these guys and prime the bottle caps. As you can see here, I, I've used green primer before, as well as gray primer, white primer, everything. A Xanathel is actually one of the best ways to prime. I can do a video on priming if anyone wants, but I just think there's so many out there, you don't really need them. But I'll probably do one anyways. Um, these basically are disposable, and you can get as much paint on these as you want. You can turn them into bases. Just as an example, I did this one the other day. This is a Gore Grunter that I've started painting. As you can see, it's half done, half not done. It's not the best paint job, but it's my paint job for my works. As you can tell, I use or uh, blue, green, and um, the Aura Boss in my last video was actually my War Boss, my Mega Boss that I use. Um, so as you can see. Again, I can hold them and paint them at any direction, and the cool thing is, is if I hold, actually I gotta do it, I'm righty, sorry, hold it like so, I can keep my elbows on the thing and turn him 360 degrees because of the grooves, and I can get anywhere I need to go. So now, as I said, I uh, did the Gore Grunter, and as you can tell, he's still good. Now, it's not just for Gore Grunters and things, because I have some small models too, like one of the Spiderlings, uh, a skirt box, which is actually on a Teen D Mini, which is interesting. And, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put him on here. So again, go around the bases. I mean, you can do it the other way and go on the dots if you're not gonna do magnetizing, but I find that it's harder to get it off sometimes. So I'll go ahead and do another one. And if you end up doing lightly in some areas, don't worry, because it's all gonna drip in the right direction. Again, you know, now I'm just putting them aside, but I'm dry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the full army that I have here of unpainted and, sorry, unprimed and half-primed miniatures. The reason why they were half-primed is uh, the other day I had only a few and I hit them real quick um, before it got cold and I couldn't do it outside. So that's what I did. I'm going to go ahead and just get some of these guys over here. I like to make an assembly line, so I'm going to get all my spider riders together that have been primed. Just go ahead and put them back where they belong when they're done being primed. And now I'm gonna go town. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna end up putting some speed or video on this one. Actually, speaking of which... So now, as you show, I can show you, that's what it looks like. It's not pretty, but it works, and you just... And because gravity is going to pull everything down, you're going to be good. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you is I didn't just have these spider riders. I also have... Unprimed ones that I need to do that were built after the fact of these ones being primed. So I want to say thank you all for everyone who's watching this and supporting my channel. Wow!